Bless the Lord, brothers and sisters. So happy to be back here again. I thank God for you tuning in. I pray for your safety in these days, years. I, I try to live my life one day at a time. We plan for the future. We have five, ten year plans. But the truth of the matter is, brothers and sisters, tomorrow is not promised. So if it's not promised to you or to me, we have to appreciate each and every day, right? So what am I saying in this video? Where's this video going at all? Well, I'm not into Greek mythology, first and foremost, but there was a story that talked about a Trojan horse and how particularly people embraced this large horse, but inside the chambers was death waiting for them, okay? It was a shell of something, but inwardly, they got tricked and bamboozled and actually ambushed. Is that how this world is going? Is that how you are positioning yourself? Embracing something, embracing an illusion, embracing a persona, embracing a, uh, how could I say, idea of something that is better or will possibly be better. But all in all, it's actually just an ambush waiting to happen. Now listen, 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 listen. Have I voted? Am I into politics or this and that? I'm into prophecy in the word of God. And the word of God stands firm. It doesn't waver. It doesn't get tripped up or emotionally driven by popular vote or it's not triggered by emotionalism. It's just truth. And that's it. God is not wishy-washy like a lot of people are. You know, years ago, I heard a song by Prince, and I'm not saying look it up, look it up, but I know that most of the people in this world has listened to the music, particularly a song called Purple Rain. And in that song, Prince talks about one thing. And I remember him saying, you, you said, said you, you want a leader, leader, but you can't, can't seem to make up your mind. And I think about that often. I think about the world and how we say we want a leader, but you can't seem to make up your mind. Wow. Oh, this video will go somewhere. Just stick a while. Stay a while. Is that you, brothers and sisters? Do you really want a leader? You know, years ago, in biblical times, people were in the midst of Christ, our Lord and Savior, our leader, our master. They said that they were looking for a leader, but somehow, some way, they were all amped up in actually crucifying the one who died for their very soul. You say you do want a leader, but are you going to stand up for what that means? Are you going to back things that is a reflection of Christ? Now, listen, I'm not saying that Trump has all the answers. I'm not saying that Biden or this one or whoever, okay, has all the answers. Because to be honest with you, when you get into politics, there's always somebody at the head that's truly, huh? pulling the strings and calling the shots. I'm not oblivious to reality, okay? But what I will say, okay, is that if your foundation and your allegiance is in man and him trying to make your life better, you're missing the boat. Listen, prophecy will fulfill itself, irregardless of who you pick. Did I vote? No, I'm, I vote for Christ. I don't, I'm not getting into the lesser of two evils. I'm not getting involved in that. What I will say, hear me, is simple. Don't be fickle-minded when it comes to your choices and what you stand for in your decisions because it can have a catastrophic and lasting effect with your walk in Christ. See, one thing about mankind is this. Oftentimes, they don't have a lot of heart or courage to stand up for what is right in this world, okay? A lot of people, I would say maybe about 80% of everybody is just going with the flow, right? They're wishy-washy. No integrity, no heart, no standing up for truth. They just stand, you know, a lot of them behind things and won't speak out about 
things of God. It, it, it's just designed that way. There's not a lot of warriors and lions out there. I get it. But you're going to have to hold on to what is real. And what is real is God's word. And you say, Samanda, well, you know, it's nice to talk about the Bible, but, you know, I'm living in reality. Well, the Bible is reality, brethren. It's more real than this world itself. A lot of you out there are just so caught up in your emotions and what you can get out of this world. Well, newsflash, this world will burn. All of your possessions and all of the things and the people that you hold dear, if they're not walking firm in Christ, they will burn as well. Don't hold on so tight to this world and thinking that this person will make me happy and this person is going to make my life better. What you need to focus on, hear me, is what you stand and really hold fast on. What you stand up for. Is God the first choice in your life? Or are you putting all of your eggs in man in one basket and thinking that they're going to somehow and systematically save you in every way, shape, or form? Mankind is fickle, brothers and sisters. Mankind is wavering. Mankind lies. It could be just you embracing an idea of something that could be great whether it be change or whether the, this slogan is or that slogan is. People can, you know, say a good thing at first. And then when you have what you have now, two, three years down the road, what you're trying to what? Trade it in for something new, something different. You no, know, you picked what you picked. Okay. The truth of the matter is you didn't realize that that could have potentially be just a Trojan horse. A shell of an idea, a shell of something good. But now, two, three years down the road, you're really thinking about, oh no, what did I really get myself into? What was I really standing up for? Who, 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 who is really in charge of this or that? They lied to me. I, I got a bill of spoiled goods. What, what, what's going on here? Brothers and sisters, that happens oftentimes when you put your faith in man. It happens. It will let you down every single time. You have to watch out for the popular vote, brothers and sisters, because anything in this world, hear me clearly, and I'm not saying Trump has all the answers. I'm just saying this. You need to stop getting on the bandwagon of the popular vote. You need to do your research. You need to realize and analyze What's really going on and who's really pulling the strings? The Satan is very crafty and he will use slogans and he will use things. You know what? Let me get off course just a little bit. You know, today I got a comment from one of my listeners and they asked me a question. In fact, two people asked me a question and it made me think, and it was an excellent question. And basically what they asked me is, how, Samantha, how do you know so much about demons and, you know, the, the, the spiritual realm and, and, and this and that, right? Spiritual warfare. And where do you, how do you come up with upwards, they didn't say this, but I guess a lot of people are thinking, how do you come up with this much content? And a lot of your videos are not the same. And you, this is, how do you know about this? Well, brothers and sisters, it's not like I get off on learning about demonology or anything like that. The truth of the matter is when you are being systematically and fundamentally taught things in church and you are a type of person that is very analytical and I try to dissect and invest my time with truth and things that really, really matter. And I was telling a person, you know, when you when you're sitting in a church for upwards of 15 years, you know, and you are being spoon fed stuff that's first grade level and you desire more, you desire to learn who you are in Christ and you learn, you want to learn about your people. And you, when you find out, you know, that the people in the Bible, you know, they, they lied about uh, their heritage. They lied about a lot of things. 
not the Bible. The Bible is not a lie, but when you are being taught that Jesus is white, particularly, sometimes you could be so caught up in the traditionalism of church, okay? And you miss so much knowledge and wisdom and insight and prophecy and history and everything that the Bible is trying to teach you. You get so caught up in the emotionalism and the feel good and the hooping and hollering and you find yourself not spiritually fed. There's a deficit there. And I'm a type of person where I'm, I want to be analytical and I want to find out, okay, who is the people in the Bible that they're really talking about? And what is the historical foundation and why does Satan try to play these games and how crafty is he and how are people year after year getting caught up and still in sin and, you know, they, they, they got their outfits on and they come fresh all the time but still are bound by demonic spirits. And I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, it's very important to learn about who your enemy truly is. And I'm not saying spend hours and watching creepy videos. I'm just talking about the fundamentals of sometimes those demons can be looking just like human beings. And the truth of the matter is, brothers and sisters, a lot of people don't want to talk about things that are unseen. They want to get comfortable with things that they can see, the things are comfortable. But the truth of the matter is you need to, oh man, to see the devil is very crafty in that he's not going to show you scary stuff. He's not going to show you scary people. But those people are actually demonic, brothers and sisters. The people sometimes that are in your world could be so full of the devil that it takes circumstances and time to really find out who is really who. What am I saying? Years ago, there was a, a movie that I saw, right? And I never forget that movie. And I believe that the guy from *The Living Color* played—I forget what his name was—he played in that movie. And long story short, right? The guy had a wife, and a guy had a son. And in this movie, he would be nice one way, and then the other time, he'd be sitting at the dinner table, and he'll be just, just mad, mean, crazy, out of the ordinary, beating up the kid, or beating up the wife, or just, just of the devil. And in this movie, somehow, they, you probably saw it, they actually showed what this demon looked like in that man. What am I saying? I'm saying, brothers and sisters, that sometimes people in general in this world can walk around looking human, acting like the devil, and have demons inside of them. You don't think, huh, man, you don't think that these lust demons are in them. You don't think that these gossip demons are in them. You don't think, brothers and sisters, that these evil spirits are in them because you're looking for the Trojan horse. You're looking for the gifts, but you're not realizing, brothers and sisters, that inside a lot of these people is an atom bomb waiting to ambush you.